Hello, folks. Welcome to Business Spotlight. You know, um, liquidation and insolvency can be a really traumatic time for any business. The sad fact is that nine out of 10 businesses don't make it to 10 years. My guest today approaches insolvency in a completely different way. He sees it as an opportunity to rescue businesses and to save lives and to save livelihoods and to save jobs. So um, I'm delighted to welcome my guest today, the founder of FTS Recovery, Marco Piaquadio. Marco, it's brilliant to see you. Thank you so much for coming on. Hi, Mark. Likewise. Good afternoon. You well? Yeah, brilliant. Great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Let's dive straight into Can this. You share with me the story behind how you founded FTS Recovery. We um, commenced trading back in August last year, so we've been coming on for 12 months worth of trading now. Uh, historically, Mark, I was a partner at two listed companies within our space, um, and uh, I was introduced to the guys at Fortis, who are a national accounting firm, looking to create a, a joint venture effectively, um, and, and having somebody that was willing to do so, almost operating as a restructuring division of the existing accounting practice, which I saw huge value in, not only to be able to give the opportunity to create something from my own vision, um, but also to be able to sort of give our clients the best advice, not just from a restructuring perspective, but also tapping into the wider service lines that Fortis are already providing. So the more traditional accounting space, if you like. And it's been rapid growth. I know you said the business was only founded uh, 12 months ago, but you've already got an office in Milton Keynes. You've got an office in Manchester. You've got a big team already. And there are other new locations in the pipeline. I won't give too much away about that. <laughs> That's yeah. hot news. So can you tell me what have been the biggest challenges that you've faced since you started the business? And how have you overcome yeah, There them? are challenges throughout uh, starting in a business. And any new business owner should not go into setting a business up with their eyes closed. I think certainly from our perspective, the biggest challenges were um, wanting to implement the best infrastructure possible so whether that be from a, an innovation perspective and systems <clears throat> right the way through to having uh, bank accounts that were from a regulatory perspective you know able to tick the box in terms of your licensing bodies and everything that was required so those things might sound like relatively straight or you know forward things to be organizing but actually it was only through a system of trial and error that we've been able to get to the point that we're at today some 12 months into the process where we're, we're probably happy with um, both the innovation side of things and also from a regulatory perspective, having systems that not only work well, but also work within the remits and parameters of what our regulators would expect from us. So a bit of exploration and a bit of learning there as well. Absolutely. Look, your, your growth has been rapid. How have you been building? What have you done to be building a, a really strong customer base and establish your brand in what is a very competitive industry when we set the business up um i suppose we had a bit of a leg up because i was able to fortunately acquire the the office of my predecessor firm um so we brought the what we call work in progress across mark which would basically be all of the um cases that we were dealing with at predecessor firm into my new milton king's office at fts recovery so we did have a bit of a leg up in that respect. We also were fortunate enough from a timing perspective to probably have been able to hit the ground running in the in the background to what is the toughest economic climate that I've ever certainly worked through, probably lived mm -hmm. through. And mm -hmm. I suspect that goes the same for, for most people um, in terms of what we're seeing at the moment and the perfect economic storm that most companies are, are having to face. Like many things, you have to go into setting a business up knowing what your working capital requirements are, are likely to be. And you have to have either willing shareholders who are willing to invest in you as a business or have some cash to put up yourself or potentially have a bank that's willing to fund you on a debt basis. We were fortunate enough to have to um, to not have to go down the debt route. So at the moment, we've done what we've done to date without creating any debt within the business. But by having a supportive group of shareholders who are willing to invest from the outset, hopefully seeing the vision longer term you talked about it being a very difficult climate right now a perfect economic storm um and you do have a culture that's all about recovery as well mm -hmm. uh, which is a great way to approach this so um with that in mind how are you having to innovate and foster culture a culture of creativity in the business well you asked me earlier about what the biggest challenge uh, had been since setting the business up and i think generally as a sector our biggest challenge mark is actually one of resource you know, the extent uh, that we're, we're seeing at the moment, uh, uh, new work being generated, new inquiries being generated from our referral group on a regularly 
sort of daily basis, it means that your biggest challenge is having enough resource in-house to be able to ensure that the jobs that you're taking on are run smoothly, run in accordance mm -hmm. with, with best practice, and, and that you've got enough feet on the ground, if you like, to be able to keep instructing directors typically happy that you're doing the job at the right pace. From that point of view, we are, as an office, only sort of half an hour, 40 minutes up the road from London, and it's quite difficult typically to recruit into geographically our Milton Keynes office. So I took the view some time ago at predecessor PLC firms that probably the best way to recruit is from the ground up. Yes, that might mean uh, typically taking graduates that have got no experience in the sector, but also that means that you're able to mould those people over the course of the first two, three years of their careers mm. um, in an environment that not only sort of encourages an inquisitive uh, background and nature, but helps nurture people, helps them get their first experience within the restructuring sector, and ultimately mm. enables you to build that team, um, not necessarily having to pay over the odds for staff who might otherwise be tempted to dip down into London two, mm. three days a week, which you know, which was a challenge that we found at the outset. You talked about um, teams there, uh, recruiting teams, building teams. Have there been other pivotal moments or decisions that you've taken that have significantly impacted on the growth of the business? Oh yeah, 100%. I think almost every day there seems to be a pivotal decision that needs to be made within the business model. You know, one of the core factors for me setting the business up was that we were on a relatively fast growth trajectory. Mm. Um, our plan, and we made no odds of making this clear to staff, was a three to five year plan. Um, and within that plan, whilst we don't want to be putting flags in the ground all over the UK, we certainly envisage getting to hopefully sort of five or six offices within five years. Um, I'm sat here within year one, having sort of established Milton Keynes, having um, established since then a Manchester office as well, mm -hmm. and also having set a presence up in London with a view to another insolvency practitioner dropping in there in the not too distant future. Very difficult pivotal decisions if you like because you're taking the risk of opening new office space and uh, mm. all the overheads that, that that would incur but equally you're doing so I think in a, in a steady growth basis uh, with reasonable forecasts behind you uh, and understanding what the cash flow parameters might be doing so in a way that hopefully is profitable from a relatively early stage difficult decisions to make but if you're looking to grow more than what I would call a lifestyle business Mm. Uh, decisions that are absolutely fundamental to the, you know, from getting you from, from A to B in that in that process. Yeah, it's been a phenomenal success story and congratulations for what you've achieved so quickly. But Thank I'm you. sure, Marco, it's not all been a bed of roses, right? There must have been some things that have gone wrong. So how do you handle failure and setbacks and what lessons have you learned from that? Well, look, you know, we deal with failure on a daily basis in terms of the clients that we're, we're advising in the main. Um, I would, I would categorize failure really as an opportunity from a PR perspective. I'll flip it on its head. Every failure is a learning process, right? I think if you remain humble and you remain open to learning, then you'll not necessarily view failure as something that's gonna, gonna make you give up, but something that's gonna only make you stronger. I go back to the points that I made about the trial and error around the infrastructure elements that start the conversation, Mark. And um, if I'd have looked at those initial um, trials, errors and tribulations as failures, we wouldn't be sat here today with systems that are brilliant, singing and all dancing and three offices that's going from strength to strength. So in that perspective, don't look at a failure as a, a reason to give up, but always look at it as, as a failure to, to, to learn uh, from and uh, hopefully build what is a, a bigger and stronger and better business for it. That's a great perspective. Good, good advice, Marco. Thank, Thank you. you. You're a very busy entrepreneur. You're a busy <laughs> husband. You're a busy dad. One of the most common things I hear, Marco, is, Mark, I don't have enough time. How on earth do you maintain a good work-life balance? How do you avoid um, burnout? What strategies do you use to keep all of that in check? Do you want my honest answer, Mark? <laughs> Go ahead. I'm guessing that you do. Um, there is no magic answer to that question. There are not enough hours in the day. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, the adrenaline of the inside drive to get you to achieve the objectives that you set out for yourself, wherever that drive comes from, is enough to get you through building a successful business um, and balancing the best that you can do with what I must say is a very understanding plan. But anything that's worth building is worth, or is gonna cause some, some hard work and is gonna to have to require some sacrifice throughout. So I have an amazing family, very understanding, I have an amazing group of, of people that I work with and a wider support group. And what I say is, you know, uh, nothing's ever going to be perfect. But ultimately, 
as I mentioned earlier, we're on a relatively fast trajectory, three to five year plan. My view is that it's not hopefully going to be forever this hectic, but I'm building something that's going to give our family um, the best life going forward. And you look at it on that basis and, and you know, a few years worth of sacrifice, hopefully it'll be worth um, worth it in the end. Your own business is growing rapidly and you're all about recovering other businesses as well. What growth strategies are you seeing or marketing strategies are you seeing working well either in your businesses or in the clients that you're working with right now? So we typically set the business up on on a, a basis that we'd like to grow in a variety of ways. Um, organic growth in our sector, Mark, is simply finding somebody similar to myself who's qualified uh, and able to take appointments as a licensed IP, but also somebody who's able to, to go off and win work. I go back to not having put any flags in geographical locations at the outset, but where we're seeing the right opportunities to speak to people who are looking for new opportunities, maybe similar to myself, you know, uh, being a partner at a bigger firm is certainly attractive and you can earn a very nice living from it. Um, but actually speaking to people that are willing to give it their all for a piece of skin in the game, if you like, mm. looking to commit the next three to five years as part of something bigger, we've been able to attract some really good people into the business organically through having that slightly different USP from that perspective. Acquisitively, subject to numbers working out and and it being done or able to be done in a profitable way, we're open to making acquisitions and it's something that we're actively looking at. Our Manchester office, whilst it was organic insofar as the individual coming in, moving across from predecessor firm, did have an element, an element, I should say, of acquisitive nature to it. Mm -hmm. So similar to being able to acquire the work in progress that I did in Milton Keynes for my predecessor firm, we also managed to, to negotiate the acquisition of the work in progress of the individual up in Manchester. Mm -hmm. So those are two sort of ways that we can grow either organically, acquisitively, or as a combination. Mm -hmm. The other big thing that I'd say is obviously from our perspective, we rely heavily upon uh, intermediary referrers, okay. um, professional services predominantly, so lawyers, accountants, bankers, etc. But there is a, a side to the business or a side to our sector that's been growing over years, and that's the use of digital marketing. So internet wins, director-led inquiries, in addition to sort of working the uh, traditional referral route, we're also developing our digital marketing strategy. And that's where we've been able to tap in, for example, to the infrastructure already in-house with the guys at Fortis, who yeah. have a digital marketing team who have been able to, to sort of help us build that platform to yeah. where it is today and hopefully grow it in the future. Um, the final element is obviously building a brand. It's difficult from uh, difficult or different, I should say, from winning work. Building a brand is an entirely different thing. So. Uh, working with a PR agency, for example, to be able to build that that brand and share our vision um, in the right way is another element that we're looking at uh, growing out. Tell me a bit about relationships. It's really key from the story that you've told so yeah. far that relationships are really important. How do you go about fostering strong relationships and how important are they to your Let's business? Let's face it, if you're a lawyer, an accountant or an insolvency practitioner like myself, ultimately you're going to be qualified to do the job that you do. You'll have a license to enable you to do it. What differentiates me from somebody else that does my job in terms of whether I'm going to win a piece of work or not is the ability to build relationships either with the, the referrer that's passing the work through to me or building a relationship with the board of directors who I'm advising. And you have to be a bit of a comedian in our game, Mark, to a degree. You know, I could be out at a construction company one day um, or I could be a, a large business in a different sector sat in front of one or more financial directors and board of directors who are wanting a, a completely different Marco. You have to be able to be adaptable to those that you're yeah. advising. You have to be um, relatively able to cross sectors without too much difficulty. Ultimately, you know, you need to be empathetic because the circumstances that we're being parachuted into are typically difficult circumstances that require at least empathy as well as the skill set to be able to provide a solution. And you know, as you said earlier, we're in this kind of perfect economic storm right now and it's a fast moving one. How, how on earth do you stay up to date with what is a fast moving situation, a very dynamic situation? How do you stay up to date with the trends and the technologies and so on? Yes, great question. I suppose uh, from a technology and trends perspective, you know, there are always various seminars, webinars that we're looking to attend in terms of what the latest infrastructure in the market is and how we might apply and adopt that. In terms of uh, keeping up with case related law and uh, specifics, we are required to conduct a, a minimum element of CPD annually in order to keep our regulators satisfied that we're on 
on top of things. There are lots and lots of things that we're able to read in terms of case law updates on a regular basis and keeping ourselves in tune with um, how things are moving. Our game is probably no different to many insofar as it's a moving beast. The rules and the app that we work to are regularly changing, um, as is the case law that sits outside of those but has significant relevance to the work we do on a daily basis. And as we said earlier, you know, it is a very dynamic situation. There is a perfect storm right now. Given given what you do for a living, what advice would you give to other entrepreneurs right now? Great question. Um, I think entrepreneurs more than ever need to be resilient, need to be able to pivot their businesses based on um, what seem to be almost daily challenges that are being thrown up. You know, you think about the ongoing rising interest rates, if you think about the labour and supply shortages, if you think about the impact of rising utilities as a result of the Ukraine war, there are just constant challenges that are being thrown to business owners, particularly in the SME world. Be open to speaking to people, to get advice, take professional advice if you need to at any stage. Um, don't give up. Most importantly, you know whether your plan for your business is for it to be a lifestyle business or something bigger, um, have a plan from the outset. You know, Understand what you want to achieve over what time period. Understand what your working capital requirement is going to be from the day that you set off your journey is to facilitate that plan coming to fruition. Work your cash flows, very important, because often we see companies fail on a cash flow basis, not necessarily a balance sheet basis. Mm. And, uh, and be bold, be brave. Everybody makes mistakes. But as I said earlier, mistakes, if you look at them correctly, are just a learning opportunity. Nobody's perfect, so go for it. Great advice, Marco. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing that. It's been a joy to, um, to talk with you today. You're welcome, Mark. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're welcome. Folks, if you'd like to come and join um, us on Business Spotlight and do what Marco's just done and share your story, we'd love to hear from you. If you just um, comment below, apply, uh, we'll be in contact and we'll fix up an interview with you. We can't wait to hear from you. Until next time, bye for now.